So good morning YouTube. Today we're going to be taking this pipe organ apart and that gives us an opportunity to kind of look at how does a pipe organ work. Well there's several ways a pipe organ works. There's mechanical, there's electro-pneumatic, there's tubular pneumatic, and there's even direct electric, all referring to how the valve opens to let the air into the pipes. So we have an opportunity to take a look at that as I uh, take this organ apart and we're going to look at all of those steps. By the way, the shirt I'm wearing features the artwork of my wife, Eileen, and you can go visit her website, EileenImperatrice.com, to see more of that, and I'll leave that link in the video description. So, let's start by taking a look at how this organ works. So first, let's take a look at the console area. Like any organ, pipe, electronic, or otherwise, we've got keyboard, and we've got pedal board, we've got a foot shoe for expression and a couple of other toe piston type things to do some different functions on the instrument. Then we have stop controls to turn on and off the various ranks of pipes in this case. Now these are draw knobs so you pull them out and I'll show you what happens when that works. The keys in this case are connected mechanically to the pipes and you can kind of hear the noise from all the levers and things that make that happen and you can also see that some of the keys have fallen down and are no longer functional and that's because things have worn out or been damaged now because this organ does not have multiple keyboards it's actually a split keyboard situation so all the draw knobs to the left of the nameplate are for the lower part of the keyboard and the pedals and then the draw knobs to the right of the nameplate are for the upper keyboard this way you could set up a light accompaniment type thing on the on the left hand side and uh, a solo voice on the right hand side and uh, so for all you synthesizer guys out there who do split keyboard stuff well that's nothing new uh, it's been going on for a while so let's go around here. It's kind of hard to see in here. If I can get the camera in there. But those are all the levers that work off the keyboard. The little round sticks push up, and then you can see there's an angle lever that then turns that push up movement into a pull down movement. And then that pulls on the valve in the wind chest. And when the valve opens, then the pressurized air in the wind chest enters the pipe. The pipe, of course, works like a whistle. It's very much like blowing air across the top of a soda bottle. Uh, you get a tone when the air sets up an oscillation. Now if we come out here... This is how the stop mechanism works. When you pull on one of those draw bars, or draw knobs, this, there's another set of levers that pull this slider out. This is the slider right here, this black board. And I'll explain what that does next. Now if we go down here to the pedal, this is just a single rank, 16 foot Borden pipes goes from the bottom note of the pedal board all the way to the top note of the pedal board and you can see down here there's a whole bunch of tubes now those tubes are not actually delivering air to the pipe itself to make the pipe sound what they're doing is delivering a pneumatic signal the column of air that exists inside the tube is set in motion when a valve opens at the pedal board itself. So I push down the pedal, that column of air is made to move, and it opens the valve that's inside the wind chest here. That valve un opens up underneath this uh, toe board where the toe of the pipe is, and the air enters and it allows the pipe to speak. So this organ actually has two different valve mechanisms. It has a mechanical mechanism and it has a uh, tubular pneumatic mechanism. Uh, 
Also on the back side, you can see the opposite side of the keying mechanism. Now we saw the levers at the front end, and they're all squished up against each other, spaced to the same spacing as the keyboard. You can see back here that those levers have been fanned out because the width of the wind chest is much greater than the uh, width of the keyboard. And the spacing is not even. The valves are closer together at the high end where the pipes are short and close together. And then the valves are spaced out a lot further. So these are what's called trackers. So when I hit the key, that lever turns like that. And you can see that that wire pulls down. And that's what opens the valve for all the pipes on that note. There are, we don't necessarily want all three ranks of pipes speaking all the time. So we have the stop mechanism, the draw, draw knobs that move these sliders out. And when these sliders are out, when the stop is out, the pipe is allowed to speak. When the stop is in, then the pipe doesn't speak. The valve still opens, but it, right now, nothing is speak, would speak. If I open these up, all of them, now I've pulled out all the stops. And if you've ever used that phrase, hey, my wife's having a birthday, so I'm going to pull out all the stops, that's actually a piece of or pipe organ nomenclature that has made it into our common language. Now you see there's a whole bunch of other tubes here. Now what this does is transfer that open valve uh, air over to these display pipes. Now obviously the trackers I showed you are in the order of the keys. So the tall pipes would be over on the left of that big box there. And the short pipes, the high pitch pipes, would be over on the right. But you'll notice this front set of pipes, they're not in order. They're not chromatically laid out. So how do I get the air over to the pipe? Well, that's what these tubes are for. So the valve that is needed is actually inside the wind chest here. And here's our slider for the principal, the front pipes. The valve opens up and then the air enters one of these tubes. So this is similar to that tubular pneumatic valve mechanism. Only this is the air that's going to actually make the pipe sound. Now you might think, okay, the valve is clear back in here and then it's got to go through all of that tubing to get over to this pipe to make it sound. Isn't there going to be a delay? Actually, no. Because the air column inside the tube does not move in a chain reaction. As soon as the air at one end of the tube moves, the air at the other end of the tube moves. It doesn't need to pressurize per se, it just needs to be set into motion in order for the pipe to speak. These tubes can be of significant length and not cause any issues really to speak of. Let me get some more light on that so you can kind of see it. Well, that doesn't help much. At any rate, so that's how we make a decorative set of speaking pipes on an organ. Now, the other way to make a decorative set is to just use fake pipes. That's done a lot, but in this case, all of those front pipes do speak. So we took a look at all of the mechanics of this, and here's how that all comes together. When I hit a key, all of that leverage goes back here, opens the valve for that note. All of the pipe ranks, say that's low C, okay, so all of the pipe ranks, there's three in the box here and one in front. All of those notes are, the air is potentially entering into those pipes, all four of them. To control which pipes are speaking at any given time. So say I want the open flute or the gems horn or the string or whatever. Um, the slider is used. And so the way it's set up is you have the top board of the wind chest and then there's like a box around that. And then there's holes drilled in that top board. 
and those holes correspond to where the pipe is going to set. The valve sets inside that, and when you pull down on it, the valve opens. Then the air can go into that channel and allow that pipe to speak. Above that is the toe board, and that's the board that the toe of the pipe actually sits on, and there's another hole there. In between there is the slider. The slider has holes in it as well. When all three holes are lined up, then air, when I hit and open the valve, then air is allowed to go into that pipe. And that's what this slider is all about. In this position, the slider is not in line, so the air can't get to the pipe. When you pull the draw knob on the console, this slider, this lever comes down, the slider comes out, all of the holes line up, and then the pipe is allowed to speak. It's the same thing for the tubed pipes in the front. In, those, in that case, the air in this setup is allowed to go into the tubes, but there is a stop in front here that controls that. The stop can also be placed at the beginning of the tubes. Either way, it's going to work the same way. So why in the world are we going to take this lovely organ apart? Well, it's got a lot of problems. It's got a lot of broken parts. It needs a lot of work. And the owner has decided, instead of having this small pipe organ, uh, she wants to get a, a digital organ that's going to do a lot more and take up a lot less space. In pipe organs terms, this is a small organ, but it takes up a substantial amount of space in this house. And it's not really all that versatile. There's not that much you can do with it. There's four ranks of pipes split over a keyboard. And it needs to find a new home. And that's what we're going to, what we've been looking for. Perhaps a school uh, would like this as an educational piece or as a practice instrument. Somebody who's like me, really into organs, might want it too. So we're going to start dismantling it, we'll put it in storage and continue to look for a new home for it. Now the first thing we have to do when taking an old organ apart is we're going to get all the pipes out. In this case we have pipes that are exposed out in the open. We're going to take those out first. Then inside the swell box, that's where the rest of the pipes are, uh, we're going to take all of those out and then they're going to go into a crate. So the pipe really just sits in place. Its own weight holds it into the tow board. And then there's either a hook, or in this case a piece of string, holding it to the rack board, which keeps it solidly in place. see that each note is slightly shorter as the pipe gets higher in pitch. So the pipe's out of the organ and laid out in order. What we do is we put them into the crates, mostly in order. I'm using bubble wrap between the layers. Got two boxes here, and most of the pipes will go into these two boxes. So there you go, that's how we do that. Rank pipes in a box. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe to this channel and make sure you hit that notification bell. There's a bunch of ways you can connect with me online. Please like and follow my Facebook artist page. It's Tony Imperatris at Tony I, the Organ Guy. Also, you can subscribe to my website, TonyImperatris.com, 
and you can receive exclusive behind the scenes content that you will get nowhere else if you go over and sign up on my Patreon page. All of these links are in the video description. Thank you.